This sauce talk is brought to you by Kicks Fest. Next stop, Montgomery, Alabama, August 12, 2023. To purchase vendor space, DM Kicks Fest on Instagram at Kicks underscore Fest underscore. It's up. Yo, 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 this your boy Slam B, man. On Sauce Talk, kicking in with Sauce World Order. You know what's up. Slim B, motherfuckers. Street Simp, nigga. Uh. R.I.P. Pimp C. UGK. Run B, Master P. Yo. Check. Uh. I'm something like a player. I'm something like a pimp. Tall, skinny nigga. That walk with a limp. Hair low cut and wavy, no perms, no gators uh-uh. Middle fingers to the haters, yeah. chuck deuces to the players i see you later, gotta hit the strip and collect this paper Like a bill collector, I need my money on time uh-huh. uh, Get the pink slip and get some more hoes on the grind And work the strip and yeah. get the paper yeah. quick This your boy Tony with another soft talk, man Diamond and Rough, man And I had to bring my, my kinfolk <laughs> through, man You know what I'm saying? Slim B, what it do? Let them folk know Man, you already know, man Slim B, man Unknown superstar representer, profound Cal. representer, Willie Park, you know what I'm saying? No, as y'all already know what's up, man. We go way back. Try to tell you, man. Um, I want to ask you this, this first question, man. I know I've been knowing you forever, but mm-hmm. I want to know, like, who introduced you to music? Like, and when you, like, what made you want to do rap? Like, what song you heard, a hip hop song you heard, and you was like, you heard, and you was like, man, I have to, I have to do this, this music thing. Um, I would say like my uncles introduced me to hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Um, just going back from like watching Yo MTV raps and rap shitty with my uncle, um, being in the car with my uncles, playing pop, you know what I'm saying? Biggie, who, you know, whomever, but um, then like far as the first hip hop song that made me wanted to do rap, sheesh, man, I can, man, I can go back from like, Damn near kid rappers to adult rappers. So, okay. um, who who maybe want to do it while I was a kid? Yeah. Shit, Chris Cross and oh, like okay, another bad yeah. creation. Oh, okay. Then like far as adult, shit, Nas, um, DMX, course, uh, the Locks from the, uh, and um, who else? Who else? Damn. So I see you got you got Jason. a lot on you got a lot yeah, on, it's, on top. the 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 list goes on you know what I'm saying so you will say, so so you from you saying that hip hop been a part of your life like your whole like your whole thirty some years yeah no nah, that's a fact though okay okay so how did you come up to realize that music was the way forward for you like shoot when we first started making money off it you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> started doing it man it was like I ain't gonna say it was for fun but it was fun but when we first tried to make some money off of it and we was like damn you know what I'm saying I remember us selling cassette tapes yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. and niggas was transitioning to damn CDs but yeah. we was still selling cassette <laughs> tapes yeah. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. so like we were selling them shit for like three dollars four dollars a pop whatever it was um and I, we was making a little money off that shit. That shit really put the battery in my back. Like, yo, yeah. yo we need to do this. <laughs> yo, because a lot of people don't know, man. We used to be in the same group, Unknown Superstars, man. Yeah, Throwback right. action, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how hard was it to transition from the group to being a solo artist? Man, it was hard. I ain't gonna lie because of the fact when you in a group, you know what I'm saying, everybody got their own they own lane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know what parts you gotta play. But when you in the, when you doing something solo, you gotta do everything. You you the main star. You yeah. feel me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So um yeah, it was hard. I ain't gonna lie, but um, you know, having a good support team and everybody you know, all the other group members supporting, you know what I'm saying, it it you know, it came out easy. Yeah. So, um, so do you remember your first rap that you wrote? Man, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't saying that, boy. Yeah, you got to say like, you got to say like one or two balls, man. man. I oh, can't, hold on. It was, oh, damn. Hold up, I kind of remember, but I don't like it. Oh, 
I had two of them joints. Hold up, it was like living in war, breaking down. <laughs> Yo, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was one of the joints. But I can't remember the other joint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was fun time, man. Like I was making music. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Doing what we want to do, going to the studio. That was crazy. So I, I know, I know you write all your rhymes. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel about ghost writing? In? What do you think about other artists getting people to write for them? Uh, I mean, well, you know, because we from that era where everybody wrote their own stuff. Um, I mean, I don't really have a problem with it because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, there been times like we've been in the studio and we threw each other a line. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, if you want to consider that ghost writing, yeah. but, um, shit, I done had folks write hooks for me. I wrote hooks for people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay. So. I mean, sometimes you you might be in, you might have that block, and you might need that support. So then you, you gotta look at it like uh, artists like Drake and who, whomever that do have ghostwriters. Man, they they some of the biggest. They don't really have time to be, you know what I'm saying? They get on tour, then they got you know what I'm saying. Gotta go to the studio. Then you might have a producer or who, whomever like, yo, we got some ideas for s some songs. So let's get to it. But uh, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, like I heard the new tape, man, it's replete of great beats, hooks, and balls, man. Run down how you and Jet linked up, and how, how, like what, like what was the process of y'all making the whole tape? Um, I'll make it quick and simple. Uh, me and Jet used to work together. Uh, I got introduced to uh, him through his older brother, and his older brother had one of my tapes, and Jet heard it, so we linked up on that tip, and uh, Jet was like, "Yo, I do beats," so. I linked up with him on the beats and stuff like that. He gave me a beat pack or whatever. Um, then from there on, we just built a relationship. But like far as the uh, the tape that we do have now, um, man, I was just coming over to the crib, you know what I'm saying, just vibing out because he was recording a, a project. Okay. And he was like, yo, jump on the song with me. So I was like, all right, cool. So the song didn't end up making the tape. Uh -huh. So. I was like, yo, let's just put it out as a single. So we threw it out as a single. Then he was like, yo, we need to come up with a tape. So I was like, what kind of tape? He was like, yo, you know, we got brands. So we, we support each other brands. Let's just put out some around each other brands. So I was like, all right, cool. And then from there on, like, I was just going to this nigga house like every other weekend. He over there recording, like, yo, jump on this, jump on that. But I'm a perfectionist, so he was just knocking shit out right then and there. Yeah. I like to sit down with my shit, you know what I'm saying, really concentrate on it. Yeah. But um, he really had got me in my bag to like really, like, hey, going to do this shit now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, kinda, he kind of changed your format of how you like write and record and stuff like that, you will say? Yeah, that's a fact. Because I like, even if I do go like, go to the studio now and I'm working on something, I at least want to take a good little minute to perfect it. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, when I do go in the booth, you know what I'm saying? I can play with it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can play with it different ways on okay. the okay. flow and delivery. That's hard, that's hard. I want to switch it up, man. I want to talk about your streetwear line. Okay. Like, what made you name it Green Girly for the people that don't know? Um, Greenwood Girly. Um, well, I had a, a previous brand called Poor Little Rich Kid. So I was working on that brand, but then I kind of like put it on the back burner. So, um, my partner crew, shout out to crew. Um, he um, he was like, yo, I got an idea for a brand. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, bet. So he was sending me some ideas and stuff. And I was like, damn, man, I'm feeling them logos and shit. So yeah. the, the nigga in me, like, I always want to see some shit on a chain. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like how we used to see the Rockefeller piece, the, the Terror Squad piece, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, damn, that shit would look good on a chain. So we just started laughing on the phone and shit. He like, I bet. So he sent me the full version of the logo. He like, yo, let's make this a brand. I like, shit, I'm with it. So yeah. we uh, we made it a brand. We started, you know, pumping out like uh, prototypes and stuff, and people were just biting on it. So from there, we we just went full fledged. But um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and do you know over time? You know what I'm saying? Um. He kind of like fell back from the uh, the clothing scene, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I pretty much put it on my back, you know what I'm saying. But you know, shit, he's still a founder of the brand, you know what I'm saying. That's dope. You that's know what dope. I'm saying. So that's dope. That's, 
That's what's up, man. I see a lot of top designers messing with your line, man. Like Green, like Gino Green, Willie Esco. Yeah, yeah. I see. Then I see you recently did a one on one for Jada Kiss. Yeah, man. Matter of fact, shit. I just came back. F you know, I just got off the road from yeah. that situation uh, from the meet and greet uh, with Kish. Um, yeah, shout out to my um, my sis Taylor. We uh, collabed on a, a project for uh, Kiss. We did a uh, custom one on one hoodie and a hat for him. And uh, we, me and her, have a, a brand called the Remix, which is both of our brands put together. Okay, you know okay. what I'm saying? And we just do custom one on ones or whatever like that. So, um, but she has her own brand. I have my own brand. But you know, we when we come together, we call the remix. Yeah, yeah. I see you. I see you hands on with a lot of your merch. Like, um, does it um, with a lot of people you see putting brands on clothes, not being like into it like you like. Like, what you think about people just want to throw brands on the clothes and not? Man, you gotta not, know what you're doing, man. Like this shit ain't easy. Like niggas, like a lot of people always hit me up like, hey, bro. Tap, you know, put me on to whoever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, and you know this for a fact. Yeah. Like when I was painting shirts and, and shoes, and shout out to um uh uh B and L Z. Yeah. Cause yeah. them niggas, I got that shit from them niggas when yeah. I used to work with L Z at Wheels. So shout out to you, homie. Um, Z the Elliot, man. Shout out to Z the Elliot. I just did a um, South South. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, it was yeah, good yeah, look, good yeah. look. Um, but yeah, when um when I used to work with him at uh, Wheels, I used to see him and B coming in with the fresh airbrush stuff. So I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? That shit fly. So I shot with them a few times. And then I was like, man, I can do this shit too. But I wasn't doing airbrush. Yeah. I was doing the hand paint, like the machine shit. Yeah. And they started doing it too. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? That put the battery in my back to just keep pushing with the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit, that shit hard though, man. Salute you, man. You doing your thing, man. man. Appreciate it, appreciate it. And you know, on Salt Salt, man, we gotta talk about kicks. We gotta talk about shoes. For so sure. on, on track six, you name on uh, Greenbacks Volume One mm -hmm. tape, <laughs> you got a song called Jordan Eights. So that must be your favorite shoe, Jordan shoe. Uh yeah, that's one of my favorite silhouettes. Yeah, uh, besides the Elevens. And threes, yeah, Jordan H is my f favorite. But how we came up with the <laughs> with the with the song, and we ain't even talking about Jordans on yeah, on the song. Yeah, know, we just happened to be talking about Jordans before we even recorded the song, oh. and the nigga named the shit Jordan H on the to save it. So we just left it at that. But yeah, that was a funny little story. That's what's up, man. You you got any more? Uh, like what? Any more projects coming out? Uh, anything with your uh, streetwear line or um, what's next? I got um my last solo joint uh, called Norwich Drive dropping out in September. Norwich Drive, you already know. Um, that's just like pretty much taking back to, to the roots of you know where the whole music thing started. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, we got a uh, uh, Greenbacks Volume Two coming this summer is go it's gonna be called the Cipher, but it's gonna be just like strictly Jack Beats okay, or whatever. Okay, so um, okay. you know, got a few artists on there we gonna um, be messing with. Um, I need a sixteen from you, man. I need you something. <laughs> come on, I need you to come out with time one time. That was up, that was up. <laughs> we, we gonna talk about it, man. All right. But I appreciate you coming on Salt Salt Diamond. For sure, for sure, man. For sure. It's up.